We are reconvening as the May 8th um, budget work session uh, for Wicomico County Council. And um, the final two items of the day is uh, the roads department and solid waste. How's everybody? Um, if you'd like to come forward, please do, and we'll get started. Roads or solid waste? We'll start with roads. Roads. This afternoon. Doing great, thanks. Doing good. If you could, if you'd want to give us an overview, I know that they've, they're um, along with other departments. Uh, there, there are increases, I guess, that have been requested and have been uh, presented to the council through the executive's office. Uh, so we're just, um, we'd, like, we'd like just to review from your point of view exactly what direction you're, you're headed and, and what the needs are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, overall, Rose is asking for a, approximately a 20% increase in our budget. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the highlights of that going through the budget. Um, there, there are some uh, some decreases um, that we've tried to offset with. Uh, we have a, uh, through some uh, accounting revisions, if you look on, I'm not sure if we all have the same printout or no, not. But, um, in our, our vehicle fuel expense, that's, that's dropped approximately 54% by breaking out our outside agency costs so that they would now have their own separate line item in the budget. There is a, uh, a vehicle expense reduction slightly for um, shifting our stock parts around from the, uh, the regular repairs and maintenance to uh, like I said, the, the parts we keep in stock. Some of the increases that we have are we have a 13% uh, increase for roads maintenance surface treatment. That's in our tar and chip program. And then also a uh, roughly 18% increase in our black top HMA program. Let's see. Does There's that increase reflect uh, just wanting to tackle more miles or does it also increase cost of the product itself? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, in general, we're trying to get more uh, more miles paid, basically. Okay. But there, you know, there's cost there's, there's always a draw, always an increase in cost okay. in material. Um, we also have let's see, I just believe that was it. The um, we have roughly uh, one point. Uh, 1.1 million in our capital heavy equipment budget. Um, replacement of a grade all, uh, a boom tractor. Uh, Road Rider has actually reduced significantly. We had a, our, our original request was for what, 210, 210. We found an attachment onto a skid steer that uh, will work just as well for 60,000. So we were able to drop that. Um, we have to replace a, uh, a mower that does right hand mowing in. Uh, a rear deck mower. Um, the the unit that we had it was built somewhere out in Oregon, and the guy is no longer in business. We don't have parts for it anymore, so we need to replace the, the entire unit. Um, I think we're roughly at what 20, 20 thousand hours on that, mm -hmm. um, and our average lifespan is about ten thousand hours. Excuse me, Dad. Let's could yeah. we get a copy of that what you got there? Um, oh, could you make a copy? Is there, you have capital heavy equipment in there? Somewhere? This is what I got right here. Yeah. 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 We've got a capital heavy equipment line that says one million one hundred eighty one thousand. Yeah, I, mean, got, I, was, I was looking for a breakdown. A breakdown? Yeah. Yeah, it's right got the, we've got the Should breakdown. Should be the budget summary. Yeah, it's kind of tweaks. The budget summary section. Go to like, two page, like 208, 207. 
in the uh, roads section. Uh, in roads. I'm at public works. Oh. Is there a separate road section? Yep. I thought it was all public works. Uh -huh. no, no, there's a... Th Which number is roads 50. in? I'm sorry, I mixed up. 50 is your road. 50, yeah. 50. okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I was in public works. I apologize. Let's, try. Let's start over. Let's go. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we're asking, asking for money to replace one of our street sweepers, uh, a, a brush tripper, chipper, and then a, uh, a tandem dump, dump truck. Uh, I don't know if you guys still have on yours the line item for the uh, great all brush cutter attachment. Uh, we were actually able to find money in this year's budget to buy that, so that's been removed as well. You mean the 16000 for it? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, so that... That's gone. That's gone. We had some surplus in the, uh, from the equipment this year that we saved some. We were able to, to go ahead and get that. So but that, that was in the budget as submitted, though? We just recently got that. It was in the budget that we submitted. In okay. February. Okay. <coughs> Those are, you know, are the highlights without hitting all the, the minor, plus or minus 1%, 3% things. Are we back up to speed on doing all the streets as far as street sweeping like we did before the recession? Yeah, um, for the most part. I mean, we still only have two sweepers. And, uh -huh. and now we're not at a staffing level that we can absolutely dedicate them every day. Uh -huh. There's a lot of days that we may have to pull an operator for one reason or another. Okay. But for the most part, we try to keep them in our 120 subdivisions in the county. So you can re react to a request anyway if somebody we try, has okay. We try to be as reactive as we can be. Yeah. I bet it's still on the like, 18 month cycle to do the whole county. Right. If we go through the whole county, it takes 16 to 18 months okay. to go through the whole That's county. That's fine. Yeah. I know we cut cut back extensively on that. Yeah. So, we so we're through. trying to just, we can't Budget downturns there. Sometimes yeah. we have to yeah. steal them and they're yeah. kind of the easiest ones to steal. Okay. But we do also get uh, credit up, credit on our WIC program for, for street sweeping. Okay. What was the fuel increase? What was that all about? The, the decrease? I had an increase. There were some accounting changes with fuel. Yeah. So, in other words, the, the the entire county's fuel used to come was the budget for the entire county's fuel was put into roads. And oh, okay, roads. okay. So now okay. there's been some accounting changes where only roads fuel is roads fuel, and there's another line item for. It will start in January, July first. Okay. Where there's a project code for roads fuel. It's, I think it's a three hundred five thousand figure, and then the hundred forty thousand dollar figure is the figure for outside agencies that purchase gas, like the nonprofits, right. and, and that, not right. county departments, the outside agencies. And that might be where you're seeing the, d the increase in, because that wasn't accounted exactly. for that way previously. But the dollar amount of what of our fuel plus outside agency, it hasn't changed. It's just that we've broken. It changes. cleans it, it cleans it, it cleans up. It it's up. a yeah. lot easier for us to see kind of like what we did with benefits. Because every so. time the, yeah. there's a question about the fuel, it comes up that it's mixed. It makes it look like our budget is a lot larger than it is. <coughs> Are we still charging an upcharge for any outside agencies that's fine to cover our cost of our equipment and things? I believe it's five cents on five the gallon. Five cents a gallon. Okay. Right. Okay. It is. Is that a, is that sufficient to cover? Is that sufficient to cover our cost of our equipment? that's something that's being looked at. I mean, at this point, it certainly is a big help, and, it, and uh -huh. the purpose of it is working. So, for instance, we just replaced our pumps, mm -hmm. which were yeah. probably 20 years old, 15 <laughs> years old anyway. Uh -huh. um, it, it should help people get fuel. Um, I know we've used it in the past when we had some other issues out there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as far as maintaining the island itself goes, I think we're off to a good start with that sinking fund that we did. In retrospect, are we saving these other agencies okay. money? Oh, yeah. Where they could buy fuel yeah, otherwise. It's only five cents, and I think they're like, uh, don't quote me, but I think on Monday right now, and our price is like a dollar seventy-seven. So, okay. you know, we're you're still saving a lot from buying it on the economy. Mm -hmm. So, so if we if we had to do more, if we had to do more, we, we could, could do it. We can still right. save them money. Okay. Right. 
And Just for um, clarification, what what does the RDSFL stand for? That's going to be roads going forward starting July 1. It's just the gallons and the cost of roads fuel. So in the future, we're only going to see one line item for fuel? No, you'll see that first line item. So we'll have two line items. Engine, you'll, you'll still have the two in the roads budget, but the first one that has no project code is just 520070. That one is for the outside agencies. Okay. And the ones that the RV, that's for the roads fuel. Okay, so the outside agencies is new to your department? No. Just it was new as a line item. It's no, gotcha. actually the project code mm. with roads is new as a line item. Last year, in FY17 and FY16, everything was combined in the, road, in the one uh, line item, roads and outside agencies, and we're, we're separating them so we can be back with that. Okay, so but it still appears that you got 140000 more. Is that correct compared to FY17? It's not. It, that $140,000 was not reflected in the Rose budget last year. And it's, it's, there is an equal line item in the revenue to pay for that $140,000 worth of fuel because it's what the outside agencies pay back to the county. Understood. Thank in, you. In fuel <coughs> Thank you. But it wasn't reflected in this year. It wasn't in Rose's budget this year, but it will be next. Okay. I'm glad you answered that. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> See, in your um, we're just kind of buttoning in here. Is that it, John? Are you sure? Yes. Is yeah. that okay? Okay. Please. I see in your um, employee list here, you got two bricklayers. Mm -hmm. Employed is it is? Mm -hmm. Well, they're masons, so I mean they're not just bricks. <coughs> right. It's all of our form water inlets curbing. Okay. Um, so we have enough work to keep them. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we can right. use okay. them. Yeah. Okay. They, I mean, we could use two more. Right? It's okay. just the inlets that are falling apart that uh -huh. were built however many years ago. All these subdivisions are all showing their age. So they, they're worth their weight in gold dust. Yeah, we were going through this year replacing the pipes. I mean, they were just barely keeping up, keeping okay. ahead of the paving crews out there. Just asking. Yeah, no, a, they've been a tremendous asset yeah. to us. Yeah. On, on that subject, on some of those, um, you know, we've heard complaints about, you know, folks, you know, the newspaper distribution and, you know, you know, is, are newspapers causing some of those issues with some of those, you know? No, I wouldn't not, say so. I mean, okay. because for the most part, our, not that I've seen. There's just I mean, age? Could, yeah, okay. I mean, for the most part, we have a grade over stormwater inlet, and it's going to catch those things. But, you know, it could potentially a driveway call or something like that get in there and cause some problems. But, um not, not that I can say that's the exact culprit of it. Yeah, I noticed that you had um, some increases for drainage and some for weather-related, I guess, <coughs> expenses in anticipation. Um, I didn't see any increases in, in blacktop and slurry and all that. So we, yeah. Yeah. we have an extra half a million for, um, proposed for hot mix asphalt this year. Yeah, the, the, the HMA <laughs> and the, uh, the chip seal. Where did I miss that? We went from two million to um, two point five. Okay. And for um, for our other surface treatment line item, it showed an increase on average. <coughs> Actually, kind of the, the we we requested a million last year, but the PO ended up being for eight ninety eight. So we those numbers are subject to a little bit of um, taking a little bit away from one to apply to another. It just depends how oh, okay. the schedules work out and so forth. I got you. Okay. Yeah, the five three or three oh one. Yeah. We, um, we know that we're way behind in our road repairs. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been since the state started cutting our money. Um, but we also know that in order to do those, you have to do pre-work work before you get there. In other words, you just don't go in pave a road. you right. got to go in and do. Um, pre and after. Pardon me? Pre and after work. Yeah, pre and after. So um, with that increase is... Could there be more done if we get more money to roads, or are we pretty much at the limit of what you could do as well, far as? It, it varies. This year has been a tough year for us because we had so much weather-related um, issues in the fall, and we have been working through those issues with pipe replacements mm -hmm. and washed-out roads that we just, fortunately, we got all of our pre-work done mm -hmm. for the most part with shoulders mm -hmm. before that happened. But then we had some jobs that we needed to do that 
we had to keep putting off because of the weather issues we had mm -hmm. in the fall. So we did pretty much get caught up on what we wanted to do. Now there's a couple roads that we pushed into this fiscal year that we were going to do last fiscal year mm -hmm. because some large pipe jobs that we were going to do. But um, you know, you're right in that there is a more workload for us. Mm -hmm. But the extra money that we're applying uh, or that we hope to get this year, the extra half million, we want to target some of our tar and chip roads mm -hmm. that are really like bumpy segments of them mm -hmm. and to smooth them out and fix them. You and you don't you don't really have to do a lot of pre work to do not that. Not really. Right? Now okay. we certainly want to replace if there's pipes that are yeah. failing because mm -hmm. we don't want to pave a road, spend the money on it, mm -hmm. and two years later have to replace a pipe. That just mm -hmm. yeah. that's not a good way to do things. But um, we definitely have been busy. But a lot of this year has been difficult for everyone in the construction industry with with the fall we had. So um, we have we have managed and we've, we've kept up for the most part and you know we're busy right now because all the paving happened at one time putting shoulders back on and striping and doing those sorts of things are you staffed are you pretty much staffed i mean i mean we're staffing certainly is not where it was in 2007 mm -hmm. but i mean we're we're um you know doing things differently and we're managing but uh -huh. of course you know our funding levels aren't what they were either right. so right. you know it Right now, we seem to be managing, and we're certainly busy. So, well, I noticed, you know, one of the statements in the front of our budget book um, statement from the executive's office is one of the reasons that we need more need cars for the sheriff's department and other departments is the roads are so bad that they're tearing the cars up. And I'm just, uh, you know, and I hear complaints from the fire departments. And of course, I hear complaints from citizens too. So. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's any way to, well, you know, I, get more done yeah. for what we've got, or um, I, I would guess more too. Money. I mean, I don't know what 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 roads we're talking about as far. I mean, I know mm -hmm. some of our what I call the back roads, you know, the tarnished mm -hmm. roads. Some of those are are bumpy in places, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's, it kind of seems like that. Um, a lot of people have this mindset that once you get past the being a bridge, everything in there is Wacomico County roads. So, That's but, not I true. mean, there's a, there's yeah. three or four, you know, yeah. five municipal different jurisdictions of roads. Right. So, right. Um, you know, we're working on some of our mm -hmm. outer roads that are tar and chip, and try to smooth the ride on those. We've taken care of several over the last um, year or two, and uh, th that's the way, the direction we want to keep going. Mm -hmm. If we can uh, um, spend what we have wisely and efficiently as possible so um, hopefully one of our way to some of those roads being a lot smoother coming up so notice you changed contractors is that working mm -hmm. out better than it is uh, there you know each contractor has their own way that they do things this year's been um, uh, different than in past years they're certainly a lot more scheduled in, in how they do it but it is working uh, I just you know they they have a lot of work to do, so we're not going to have the luxury of them jumping back in here. And if we have some things to throw back, you know, additional to them, I don't know that they're going to have the time to do it for us. Hopefully, they will. So, we'll have to see. Yeah. Is there a uh, to the roads I travel almost or Fire Tower Road and Atkins Road? And those mm -hmm. are uh, extremely bumpy roads, even though the surface is nice with the tarn ship. I mean. Rip but the bumps, yeah. The bumps are there. Is there actually a process that you guys can? Well, Atkins Road is one that's being considered to, if you know, with this extra money that hopefully we can get, and to target some roads like Atkins Road. Now, the the what we've tried to do is go and look at our tar and chip roads that are considered major collector roads, mm -hmm. and from the traffic volumes that they receive, they would be the first priorities to fix. And sure. there are still roads like you know Parsonsburg Road is a collector road, Norris Twilly Road is considered a major collector road. And we've done traffic counts on those roads to right. see so that we have some basis for why we pick which roads we pick. Yep. So a road like Fire Tower, although, yeah, it's bumpy. I mean, it really is. It, traffic the traffic volumes, it would be hard to pick that road, right. to spend a lot of money on that road over, uh, you know, a, a road that's traveled a lot more heavily. So right. Right. that's, but Atkins Road is definitely a road that's, that's being looked at because especially between them, um, um, Jersey Road and Hickory Mill, yeah. so that's you know pretty bad in there. Okay, um, and what is that process? I mean, is that do you have to go straight uh, hot mix, or I mean, is there a process for actually? Well, you know, it, you learn kind of by history, mm -hmm. and for for a period of time, the county tried to go in and what they call reclaim a road, and they would grind it up and, and blade it back out, okay. and and you can do that, but when you disturb what's underneath that road, to get the compaction that you had. 
and the amount of time and labor that you spend doing it, it's really better, especially from a traffic standpoint as well, to just use hot mix and overlay those roads and you smooth them out a lot and you don't disturb what's underneath of them. Okay. So your costs end up being the same, if not less, to do it that way. So that's kind of the direction that we're going in. Okay. Okay. And, and that is an interesting point, what Matt says. Um, because I've always looked at roads as you know, degrade, the degradation of the actual road itself. Mm -hmm. um, but what is a really, I think, just as equally concern, concerning is um, whether the road, even though it may, the surface may be great, there are a lot of bumps, right. that I guess maybe from um, settling or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. so that a road that looks very good actually is very difficult to drive. And right. where that really comes into play from talking about fire tower road is uh, in talking to the uh, firefighters in Hebron, he goes, well, that fire tower road, that's a mess to try to get down yeah. that road. Yeah, and, and that's that road in particular is between Crooked Oak and Anacook Road is the mm -hmm. worst part of it. Mm -hmm. And that would be the section that, of course, we would probably deal with first. The rest of it on down to Quantico Creek isn't that bad. Right. But, you know, you're looking at, you know, two miles of road there, and you're, so you're looking at probably 250 to $300,000 just to smooth that road out. And, and minimal um, usage, really. Right, it doesn't yeah. get a lot of use. In it it does, but my, my question, though, is that when you have a fire truck that's trying to go to a fire, mm -hmm. Because I, after I left there, mm -hmm. I drove about uh, 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour down the road just to get a feel for it, and it was pretty bumpy. Yeah. And I was, thinking, you know, saying, what if a fire truck had to do this thing? My like, God, he, he would lose right. it around the corner. I don't think they go that way. I mean, from my understanding, we have some guys at the road division in the fire department, and they pretty much avoid that road because <laughs> of that reason. You say so, they avoid that road. They avoid that road because but, of that it, reason. But is that what if that road happens to be the most direct? Well, I'm, I'm, sure they would, I'm sure they would take it, but I mean, I'm sure that they would take it. But well, you, got you know, farm trucks too. You know, I mean, you and farm to, trucks, yeah. You know, the other year we looked at Fire Tower Road, and it was a, between Fire Tower and Rock Welcome Road. And you know, one road's a major collector road that gets you know a few thousand cars a day, and then you have Fire Tower Road that gets you know um, 300 cars a day, 400 maybe at the most. And so it, you know, and it boils down to what our budget ends up being. So if we can start with what we, you know, if we look at this half a million dollars like this year, if, if it's something we can use to, to target these roads that are bumpy and have bumpy segments, I think that's a great way to, to approach it. And it is a fine balance on trying to figure out how much it's used, to what degree it is, and, and mm -hmm. what's the importance of that road, whether it's used a lot or, or just a little bit. But I think like what Joe was touching on is that uh, whether or not with the budget that you have right now, if you really feel as if it's restraining you from what you potentially could do. Well, right now, we're, I mean, the money we have is going towards the, our structural issues with the roads. Uh, at State Highway, there was also an aspect called rideability, which is, is addressing what you all are talking about, the, mm -hmm. the, the bumpiness. Um, our program is, again, it's, it's structured towards keeping the roads from falling apart. Um, I mean, certainly with more money and more people, you can get more done. Um, but, you know, we're, we're constrained with trying to, uh, to, to work with what we have. And then certainly, you know, if if we're aware of hot spots like like Fire Tower, it's something we can look at trying to to addressing. Um, but like we were saying, some of these fixes just they're not cheap. Mm -hmm. you know. And just because they happen to talk to one of us about it doesn't mean that that makes that that highest right. priority. Right. You got you know we still respect the fact that you have your list. Yeah, but I mean you know, uh, citizens calling about problems and certainly making us aware of them is good. I mean I like you know but. You know, sometimes, I mean, while I recognize that it, 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 it may not be the smoothest area, you know, there's a greater need somewhere else. Um, but, I mean, fire tower certainly something that's been on my radar for the last, you know, several years. I mean, it's been bumpier longer than that, but um, um, just where we're at with, with trying to get caught up from years and pretty much nothing till now. So, I mean, I'm not going to say that um, it wouldn't be too far down the road that we could hope for something to happen to it, but there's some other places we need to really take care of first that are far worse. So. And then we have a lady that called me and didn't want her road paved because people drove too fast on it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So. Traffic calming. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's traffic calming. Yeah. Yeah. Built in speed bumps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have a uh, uh, list? We have a list of sure. There are priority uh, roads that need to be paved. Mm -hmm. And I assume they're in some type of order. Does the public have access to these? They're on our website right now. They're on the website. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, yeah. What's, what's being proposed for next year is still mm -hmm. in, in the makings, and there's probably 
um, 90 percent complete as far as what we're proposing for next year. And we'll put but, that up on as well when it's finished. So okay. this year we put up all the roads that were we were going to repave. We we'll also include a description of what the different surface treatments are because the general public generally won't know what it, mm -hmm. a chip seal or a slurry seal is. So there's there's descriptions about that with some frequently okay. answered questions. We'll put up this year's. Um, proposed roads and then our, the goal is to put a guesstimate up of the following year's roads as well and we'll just keep updating that as the as the process goes on and um ultimately we you know our, our ultimate goal is to have like a, a gis type map of the county road system that people can click on and see what the surface treatment is when it was last paved and you know Lord willing, when it's going to be paved again great so. thank you can i ask, is jersey road one of them Oh, Jersey get, Road is both uh, pretty much from uh, uh, Moore Street. Street to uh, Neil and Moore Road will be um, part of it will be paved this fiscal year and part of it will be slurry sealed this fiscal year. So we're going to get rid of that center lane. That yeah, we're, we're going to put we're gonna dedicated bike lanes. So the revision for Jersey Road will be instead of two uh, two throughs in a, in a center turn lane, you'll have two throughs and uh, six foot wide bike dedicated bike lanes on each side. Nobody understand that center lane. <laughs> it, it, for, for the volume of traffic you've got out there, it's, it's, yeah. it's not really necessary. We did the same thing out there, to, well, similar to um, uh, to, to Mount Herman when we were doing um, what's with the state. But in that case, we left, we call them the twiddles, two-way left turn lanes in the center. But then at, took out in the, the outside lanes because just the volumes didn't need the, that, much, uh, that much asphalt. Yeah, the, uh, I'd, I'd like to start moving forward with the kind of adopting the state highways policy for bike lanes. Of basically, if you're going in and you're repaving something for more than a quarter mile of the road, you start looking at what accommodations you can do to make bike lanes, uh, to add them in, whether it's through a dedicated bike lane or a share of condition. Um, but the, the state's got a very good concrete policy on, that, on how they approach that, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they put a bike lane in on 13. I still don't understand that. <laughs> that, the, the bike lane on 13 was actually uh, uh, through a request from SU as well. Who? Uh, SU. The, you're talking about the one that's right there in front of SU between college and Nova. Come on the bypass. You come on that overhead bridge. And oh, the Sharrows. Right yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. That boy. You come down the buses and there's a bike sitting right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got, slow down. Got, got to share the yeah. road. Um, yeah. That, 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 no, oh, because it's, 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 it's not. Bike. No, because the the way if you look through, let's see, getting into the technical part <laughs> through MUTCD and the bike policy, if you don't, in order to have a bike lane on a thirty five mile an hour road, you have to have at least four foot of, of lane, and if you and you don't have it, then you go with and a little bit extra width and put in the share of condition. With the idea being the share is directing the cyclist where they should travel in that lane. Where they should. Um, where they should. I won't ride on it, but I'm not. You know, it, it, it's 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 just a, a bike level of comfort. There's a lot of uh, dedicated cyclists that yeah, feel perfectly cool. comfortable riding. I see one gentleman out there all the time with his yeah, packs of saddles. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Okay. I'm glad to see uh, where we're headed. You know, the road was kicked in the teeth uh, for many years now, thanks yeah. to the state of Maryland. So glad to see where. Yeah, it is nice to, to see this happening. So Lee does a great job of you know staying on top of everything. I mean, it's just he's just instrumental in keeping us and keeping us going. Yep, yep, we believe so too. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, in. guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. Are we going to do a, the Dallas Public Works yeah. section? Yeah. Part? When do we do it? The one? Yes. So public works section. Dallas first part. Okay. Solid waste and then public works. Well, we've done roads and then we're going to do then we're going to do solid waste right now. And then we're going to do public works. What's, I'm sorry. What's I got a question about it? Oh, engineering. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the five thousand dollar grant to the fleet watchers. Where did that come from? That comes in as part of the the, the WIP program. They had um, they had put that request in, and we've been using their efforts as part of piggybacking on their efforts as part of our community outreach and education 
requirement through, through the WIP program, mm -hmm. but then we can also use that as part of our, um, you know, where they go out and do the river water, river quality monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, we can claim credit for that as well. So who gets that $5,000? The, 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 the creek washers what themselves. They do with it? Water testing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah, uh, they, they, they do their water testing. So if we didn't give it to them, how does the water testing get done? They do it anyway? Or? I, I believe there's a, several folks that put money into it. Um, not off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you the names. I'm just concerned them. about us making, giving a grant to, um, you know, an organization that's not something we usually do. Excuse me, let me finish. And, you know, seeing sure. that it being in there, I was concerned about it. Yes, sir. I sit on the Resources Committee, and the, uh, Judy Stribling, who, Judy Stribling, mm -hmm. who's in charge of the Creek Watchers program, mm -hmm. is chairman of that committee. And uh, their funding has been, was cut by the state this year. Mm -hmm. So they got uh, $14,000 from the state last year, and they didn't get anything this year. Well, so the city paid seventy five hundred, and the county's come up with five thousand. Yeah, well, I don't know that. I don't know that we shouldn't. I mean, I don't see us giving a grant to a, just an organization like that. That's not something that we've done before. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I think there's a whole list of them actually in the yeah. back of the uh, uh, budget book of, uh, that we've given uh, funds for. Uh, that uh, why would the state you could pull them? Why the state cut them? Yeah, I don't know. Probably because of funding issues. I don't know, but considering uh, the, the condition of the Wicomico River and uh, some of its tributaries, it's probably not a bad idea to keep continue monitoring it. Uh, they have cooperation with Salisbury University and uh, the Extension Service, where they use a lot of their facilities, uh, and that's basically where the uh, funds go. But the, so we have to pay for to use that. Uh, a portion of it, yes. There's GIS funding and mm -hmm. things like that to go into it. Uh, but the bulk of it, we've got 21 volunteers that spend, you know, probably 30 or 40 hours each uh, on their monitoring system every year. I mean, do we pay them to do that? We don't pay them. Oh, okay. Okay. Just asking. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from anyone? Thank you. No, huh? Um, now we're waste. solid waste, yes. We'll start with the, uh, the good news first. We're, oops, on, on the revenue side, the uh, solid waste is expecting to pull into a, a shade under $13 million this year um, through, the, uh, through tipping fees, the collection of the, uh, the household waste permits, um, and, and several other uh, sale of recyclables, things like that. Um, that money is getting spent with a, a large chunk of it going towards the self-funding of our cell nine which is uh five million dollars which will you know right now we're at a what's that yeah yeah 140 feet so right now we're, we're above the tree line um we're experiencing a lot of wind blown issues trash coming up we, we've had uh, enough wind to lose our, our litter fence at this point so it's really you it. it can't keep expanding Shush. upwards um, so the um just going through some of the uh again hitting some of the highlights of our uh, of our budget So you see uh, roughly a 60% a, a increase in our facility expense um, that's going a lot towards the, uh, the recycle centers and uh, the, the, um, yeah, the scale maintenance. Um, 
let's see, we had an increase in our, uh, we were uh, uh, basically doubling our, our recycling expense for having the paying out for the electronics that we take in that we didn't have to pay out. We saw an increase, we've seen increases in those over the years, so we were asked to, to double that up to, to, to cover some of the costs so we don't have to keep transferring money into it. Um, vehicle fuel expense dropped by about 20%. We had a, a roughly 43% increase in our vehicle expenses other to help replace and, and maintain the zone R equipment, which is the, the, the <coughs> GPS tracking and um, <coughs> yeah, maintenance of the existing equipment. We had a 60% increase in our computer software. That was for two reasons. One, we're adding a second computer to the uh, to the scale house. <coughs> right now, when you pull in the the computer that's out there, if you can't have somebody pulling in and pulling out at the same time, it's one measurement or the other. So we're adding a second computer so we can get people in and out faster. Um, they can weigh one one person as they're coming in and weigh the person as they're going out. Uh, it also helps cover costs of the, uh, the drone we're proposing to use. There's a, uh, an aerial drone that we can use to calculate the volume of the landfill, which MDE requires. Uh, so you can fly the drone overhead, and it takes geometric measurements um, to calculate how much volume we, we've been adding in, whether daily or weekly or monthly, however often you want to do it. How is, have you been doing that before the drone come along? Using what? Grab that, that um, microphone. Down. Excuse me. We, we fly with a plane. I'll be right back. And every every time we do that yearly, the cost the cost on that is about eight thousand dollars a year to have that that work done. So, from a surveying standpoint or a, a volume calculation standpoint. Using a drone would instead of that, we we could do it one time a year, or we could do it ten times a year, and it wouldn't cost us anything extra. Can you answer that? Start doing. over again on that question. Yeah. While I clean up we're, we're using an airplane. They, they fly with an airplane, and they use a software it's called LiDAR. Uh -huh. It basically shoots an infrared dot down and mm -hmm. just bounce back off of it. Mm -hmm. That'll give you height, elevation, and those types of things. Has that been working? It does work. Yes. Okay. Um, but it's eight thousand dollars. Say how many? It's eight thousand dollars a year to have. So what's it going to cost for the drone and somebody to manage it and so the, the run drone it and all itself, that? Um, you have an initial cost. We're not. It's not necessarily just being looked at from a solid waste standpoint. It's sometimes as it's from a uh, could be a dread site. Mm -hmm. It could be flying up to look to see if there's an osprey on the tower mm -hmm. that's got eggs in there. Um, it, it has a variety. Could be used to look look at somebody's backyard and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, they're not that good. Uh, <laughs> they're not that good. We actually did. We just recently yeah. discovered a, a beaver dam by some. No, um, no, I'm talking about looking in somebody's backyard or inspecting somebody's property. Could they be used for that? They could. Yes. Yeah. If, if so. you had a compliance yeah. a compliance issue where yeah. needed, yes, that's, that's what I was yeah, thinking. And, and one of the things that we did, we did, um, we just went back and surveyed uh, some water backing up, and it was created by a beaver. Mm -hmm. that we couldn't get to to find out mm -hmm. why it was backing up. So we just flew over top mm -hmm. of it and we saw it was the beaver and we went in there and broke the beaver dam. So it, it's a lot of uses. Um, it's, it's, one one it's of the really interesting things too is it has a, a, a camera attachment that will detect infrared so we could be able to detect if there's a methane bloom coming out of the landfill. So we can figure out where we want to strategically sink our methane ca capture wells um, which is, yeah, for, for me personally, that's just, my, my inner geek just starts clapping when I hear that kind of thing. <laughs> so do you have the drone now or are you looking to buy one? I have one that I use as my personal drone that I do use uh, for inspecting the landfill. Okay. Uh, I, can, I can say this, after I started using the drone, how we filled, the directions that we filled, how we, we operated, I, it changed. We 
because of it. Because if you're staying on top of the landfill, it's easier to look at this and say, well, we need to do this. But when you can back up away from it and get a better view of it, then the perspective of it changes. And Mark's personal drone doesn't have the ability to collect the survey data for the for the drone that we're proposing. In fact, we've actually gotten some, just from Mark's use of his personal drone with managing the site, has gotten some recognition from MDE as far as them pointing other landfills in the area to Wilcomico County for innovative ways to, to manage our operations. Where was that beaver dam? That was over off of Mount Herman, wasn't Mount it? Herman. There's also uh, some power lines over there. It was to Forest Grove. Yeah, the, the water's backing up on Forest Grove. Yeah, I know where it's at. And that's yeah. what I was trying to remember. Well, we knew Beaver Dam was there. there. I mean, we already knew it was there, so I don't know why we needed a drone to find it. But <laughs> everybody knew. I mean, the Beaver well, Dam's been being built in there for years. Actually, so. the, the, the use of the drone, threw, I think it basically threw the issue back to the power company. It was in the power lines. Yeah, yeah there, there was some, there wasn't, we, we weren't sure where. Where it, where it was, was, was whether it was it, it behind someone's private property or if it, you know. my concern, my concern is this thing being used to snoop in people's yards and things like that. I have a big concern about that. No, well, really that, that, yeah, that's not our intention. Well, I know, but we just said it could be used for that. So, okay, I'm good. Did you say the um, there's a difference between the drone that you're proposing and your personal drone? Yes. What, can you repeat what the difference is? Uh, the, phone, the drone that we're proposing has clear camera capabilities, mine does have. Um, heat seeking? Heat seeking, yeah. Um, generally, it's like what, what Dallas had said that if you were to fly over the landfill with clear cameras, you would see what you see is methane coming out of the landfill. The methane coming out of the landfill is hotter than the air. Around it. So what it allows you to do is to say we need to put a well here, or we need to put a well here to maximize the methane collection that's coming out of the land. That, that's one use of it. It actually also has an upward facing camera. If you had a bridge that had a problem where before you would have to hire a bridge tender to come in and go underneath the bridge, now you can fly into the bridge and the camera actually looks up and can show you at any point what, what it is that you're looking for. You're a pretty good operator to fly one of them drones under the bridge, don't you? <laughs> I would think. I want to see that when you do it, and I want to watch you do it. <laughs> and, and also the, uh, the, the survey data. The, you know, the, the drone marks got, I mean, it's, it's a camera on wings, basically. But it, it, it can't take, uh, you know, it can't do the, uh, the, collect the survey the way the, um, the LIDAR can. With, with, when we have to pay $8,000 a pop to get an airplane to fly over, now we can go out and fly it as often as we, as we need to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have software that goes with the drone yeah. that you're yes, proposing. Yes, exactly. Now, is that $8,000 for the airplane flying, is that in this budget somewhere where you've been paying that? Or? Uh, no, actually, it's in the current budget that we're in. Uh -huh. So you have that and the drone in here? Uh, I do not believe so. We have $8,000 through, you would see it in the survey line item somewhere mm -hmm. in there. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. how it would work. How often did you do that? That was yearly. On a yearly basis? Mm -hmm. are, are we just going at this randomly now? John, if you want to comment, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the grinder. Yeah. Uh, which you got seven hundred thousand dollars for, and then uh, it's leased. We're Do going I understand that it's leased? We're, the one we have now is not leased. Like okay. We have, well, our intention Proposed. is for two leases. Yes. Okay. So we'll have two grinders then. Uh, yes. The, 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 the difference is, so what we have now is a tub grinder. It has an operator on the machine and an operator on the loader. We're going to change from that form to a horizontal grinder, one or more efficient, but they don't have that second man on there, so it turns it from a two-man operation into a one-man operation, and it's more efficient, so it actually grinds more. Uh, you mean it's self-sustaining and it's computer-driven and uh, yes. 
has a remote. Nobody ever has to look at it? No. It's oh, okay. <laughs> so the person no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Still, t still requires the person yeah, to load still, it. Yeah, it still requires right. it, but not but, the person But there's a remote it. with that person in the loader that runs it okay. or operates it. Yeah. Now they, you know, if they hit something, they, they've got all these security features that kick out. Okay. It's, it's designed to kind of protect itself to a point. Um, and it is leased, and there's a heavy uh, uh, agreement for maintenance for on it. Maintenance uh, on it yes. So we're, we're covered pretty much. For maintenance of, of normal operation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if a sledgehammer right. head goes to it, then sure. yeah, we're going to have to pay for it. And we're, we're actually going to keep the old grinder, and the point of keeping the old grinder is, is like we just clear trees and things for the borrow pit and the new cell the site for the new cell, and all those have stumps, and horizontal grinders don't take stumps. Okay. Not without processing program. So it's easier, it's paid for just to keep it and grind the stumps with it than, than it is to, to get rid of it. You, you have a crematory? No. Uh, the Humane Society has a crematory. For me? The Humane Society has a crematory. This is a crematory revenue. Yes. I believe at some point we may have financed crematory for the Humane Society. <laughs> Could that be that after they've done a crematory, do they do they bring that to you? Well, what, what they I'm, a cremation. What I, what I believe the creation of this this was was the fact that they would euthanize the dogs and they would bring the dogs out to the landfill and they just basically throw them out there on the ground. Now that gives a lot of people heartburn, seeing dogs just thrown out like that. Uh, as an operator, it, you know, you can't hear anything about animals or anything. Mm -hmm. So, to get away from it, that was the, I believe that that was the... Uh, well, it appears that you lent the money then to the animal control yeah. to build a crematory. Yeah. And, uh... John, what, what happened in the past? Oh, thank you. In a little history here, and we did this with some other things too, the, the landfill's been a pretty good pretty much a slush fund a lot of money mm -hmm. and um, so I think what, what what else was it we lent money to we'd loaded it to the general fund a couple years ago wasn't it, it to fund. yeah we lent money to the general fund a few years ago when we were in the recession so I think probably from what Mark's statement said there they needed a crematory so it was lent at some point in time in 2002 yeah. before our time and um, they finally paid it back, so well, that's, that's the, probably that's the yeah. 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 So, anyway. A minor thing about uh, training also on uh, uh, page 15, we've got a clothing allowance of $4,000 for safety shoes, safety vests, hard hats, uh, for required for solid waste employees. How many employees do you have in solid waste? All in all? Uh -huh. uh, between convenience centers and the landfill, it's roughly at any one year point between 16 and 65 people. 16 and 65, so 4,000 is not an unusual amount then. Okay. And, uh, but did you get uh, recycling, of course, has always become an issue or being an issue uh, since it's not generating enough income to uh, uh, cover its cost mm -hmm. uh, or barely covering its cost. We had uh, some, someone approach me about uh, electronics uh, being recycled for good, at Goodwill for free, whereas we had been shipping in, uh, items to uh, New Jersey, I believe, right. at $6,000 a load or something along yes. that line. Uh, is that, and here? We've actually contacted Goodwill, and Goodwill has been very slow at this point to respond. Slow to re reply? Yes. Okay. And, but my, my, uh, Responses, I understand that they will take all of the electronic supplies except uh, uh, tube televisions yes. uh, at no cost uh, to the county. That's what they said. Which means we should be able to save the amount that we're shipping uh, to New Jersey? Well, in the configuration of electronics recycling, mm -hmm. a large portion of the electronics recycling, unfortunately, right now is tube type TVs. Mm -hmm. um, as, as, as the old two types are phased out and the new flat screens are, are phased in. Unfortunately, the flat screens cost us like the two TV does. So it's a, 
that is the majority of, and it's the same thing with the monitor for the computer. It's the same thing. So that is the majority of the bulk of what we're dealing with. So we're still going to be shipping that, yeah. but hopefully much less than we were before. Mm, yeah. Yes. That would be the whole deal. Um, on the same page that John was just on, um, page 15 there, it talks about legal fees, $500. Um, is that, is, you know, we have a county legal department, you know, where we, you know, pay money to, you know, we contract with, or, you know, we have services there. Is this, are you contracting with a separate firm? What, what, what is no, justification for legal fees here? I would, not? I would believe because of, uh, it's always this an enterprise fund. So if you seek out legal advice, who do you go to? Do you go to the county attorney? Who do you, who you yeah, we still go to yeah, the county still attorney. Over. It's just and then do you, do you personally write a check for, for that amount of time that's been done? I'm assuming that's what you're suggesting. No, actually, there's been $500 budgeted the last several years in the solid waste fund, and nothing has been used. So it's something that had been sitting there, $500, if it was needed. We, so far, we haven't needed the county attorney. For mm -hmm. I was just curious that if you use the county attorney, I'm assuming it, I was just a matter of curiosity. If you use the county attorney, would you write a check to, to the? We do not. No. For regular just contracts, um, looking at documents, things like that. No, we haven't paid them anything. We I believe it, it would be something like if we needed defending at MDE, those types of things. Okay. Yeah. Then, then. That would be more outside of the scope. I would assume that there's a scope like more. Like if we had outside of yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, what it says in here, law assistance is needed for commercial, hauler, non-payment, and bankruptcy. Well, we have that that sort of thing too. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I was just again, it just kind of popped out at me about why that's in there. Well, when we've we, been successful yeah. at getting people to pay their bills. Um, uh, not to say that we've had a large amount of, of money that we. We've had to go after. Yeah. All right. I just, again, it just kind of popped out when we have a legal department that we're paying for, and then there's legal right. fees in here. It's kind of interesting, you know, wondering how that works out. And I mean, that goes back to, to what I say is I, the way I look, I look at solid waste as an enterprise fund, we generally we don't use yeah. general fund money. So, yeah. you know, those, those things yeah, are we're, available to yeah, us. I'm good with that, yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah. yeah. We're more, still part of the county, though. We're still part we're of the county, county yeah. yes. Mark, when we open up this cell number seven, cell number nine, nine, nine. nine. Yeah. how many more cells do we have? Um, I believe we have no, five more, five more, five more cells. Yes. Five more cells. Yes. Good for another twenty-five years. That's what they tell me. Yes. Based on <laughs> based, <laughs> based, based on, on volume current use. <laughs> yes. Based, based on, on, on use. volume calculation mm -hmm. and tonnage per year. Now, are you exploring uh, other options for disposing of some of the waste? Yes. And uh, how's that working out? Um, I would say, you know, well, there are some property that's come available to us around us that we're, we're looking at that would be an expansion of the landfill itself. Well, I understand the expansion of landfill, but I'm talking about uh, biosystems and uh, uh, that type of thing. For well, you're asking me from a viewpoint of my knowledge of solid waste? Is it being explored? Uh, the only way that I truly know of tried and true technology other than landfilling is incineration. Now, whether that incineration comes through shipping it out of the county to an incinerator or right. the county having an incinerator itself. Right. We looked at that a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was, well, that was gasification. Gasification we also. Yeah. I think what John's talking about is also more recycling, more things well, by, along by, that line. By John? Yeah. Okay. Biodegradable, Bio similar to well, anything to come in here anything in those areas. The, the, the things that I would look at when I look at something like that, and, and like I say, this is from my experience, so, so, so take it from what it is. Um, recycling markets right now are depressed. tanking. Depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depressed is, is, a, is a good word to use. And so the hopes of finding 
new materials to recycle are very limited. I, I know the state, they have zero waste legislation. Um, I, I absolutely see no way in the world unless something is created for the counties to work with that that, that can be achieved. Um, then the, the next thing that MDE really wants to promote and push is composting. Right. And the problem with composting, and I'll, I'll use an example, there were three major composters in the state of Delaware. Then Rec put, you know, promoted these things as the, the greatest things in the world, and if they're done right, nobody smells anything, it's, it's all good. The reality of it is, is it's not a perfect world, and they start to stink, and the neighbors start to complain, and then the state comes in and regulates you heavily over these complaints, and then before long they've regulated you clear out of business. Sounds like chickens. It's sort of chickens, yes. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm always looking for a new way to recycle something that we can keep out of the landfill. The problem is, is that <coughs> the market, just like Joe said, is being depressed so bad uh, that there's not a lot of opportunity right, there. Sure. Yeah. So. We have hired a new recycling coordinator to try to expand our recycling program. There's, we've, we've had several meetings about brainstorming ways to, to kind of get out there. there there's a lot of uh, apartment complexes that just aren't engaging in the, in the uh, recycling program. We're looking at potentially moving some smaller scale recycling centers into uh, uh, residential communities in the county, um, not on like the big bins, but on like the, the, the smaller trash can types. Uh, n again, not curbside, but there'd be one central location uh, that we would then go in and pick up to try to, to, to encourage people. Because uh, we have had recycling centers in the area shut down, uh, folks just didn't want them in the area. So we're, Exploring options for adding those places back in. Um, so. Which which brings up what's happening in Fruitland? Yeah, so Fruitland asked us to, to leave, and right. so we we are looking at other locations. We we, we think we found a couple. Wow. Um, one of them was the uh, is the Fruitland Walmart, but with any large corporation, <coughs> it's slow to get an answer from. Uh, we're, we're looking at some other areas as well. Um, Right now, we're not ruling really, really anything out. For, for the public, Fruitland asked you to leave because I believe it was at near the city hall. Yeah, the city hall. Uh, <laughs> there was trash blowing around there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which was another issue. That, that, now, the way we'd like to move in, in the future is, to, is to, to build a better site and to monitor the site better. And there may be uh, some video cameras out there. And uh, the reason saying is, we had the one that was in front of Walmart. Now, Walmart didn't ask us to leave because of trash or anything. They, they sold it to Burger King. But they offered us the space around the side of Sam's Club. The funny thing about it was was the one that was out in front of Walmart, they would trash it not 50 feet away from a major highway. Mm -hmm. With no, no concern about it. I mean, they just did it. And when we put it around the side of Sam's Club, they don't trash it at all. Why and do you it? Well, no, there's a cluster of cameras up on the side of Sam's Club that monitors their loading dock. What if they know it? And I believe that their fear is, is that they're being caught on camera, and if they did it, they can be prosecuted for it. So, if you know, if we can monitor some of our sites, especially to start with some of our worst sites that mm -hmm. seem, seem to get that, which we're working with Delmar right now to, to go back in there and do some stuff with that, and hopefully we can get them back in line where people aren't trashing Because we send litter crews to them now three times a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and let's get back to cell number line, nine. Line. Yes. I want to ask a question about that. $5 million? Yes. How much is it going to cost next year? Next year? Yes. Uh, that should, cell number nine should hold us at the height the landfill is now probably for the next six years. So we're not going to see anything, any no. requests for funding for no, next no, no, no. six uh, years? They'll, they'll, they'll definitely go anywhere. You'll see funding come with cell construction every five, six, seven years according to how big it is and how much waste is coming into the landfill. Okay. How about these uniforms here? 25000 for uniforms? 25000 is what we have asked for, yes. Um, we're getting back into having our people wear uniforms. And Even we you guys? Have, we, no, well, not so much. But the, the, the field worker. So every, everything's uniform. So what is the new logo? Uh, the new logo would be the old logo. Oh, so you mean the uniform with a new patch on it? 
Yeah, I mean, it would be the, the standard county patch, just like this yeah. one here. Yeah. I didn't know it sounded like new logo. You no, 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 logo. no, no. Okay. So, okay, then if you got 25000 for uniforms, what is the clothing allowance at $4,000? The clothing allowance for $4,000. So, $25,000 is the operating employee base. For, this is universe, something we've not done before. So, you know, you, you wear them, you bring them in, they take them and wash right. them and bring them back to you. Um, the office staff, not so much. So, um, they can, you can give office staff two or three nice polo shirts with a county emblem on them, and they can pretty much rotate those things out. They don't, they don't require right. the. But that's the uniform. That's not an allowance. I think the uh, the, right. the the the, the four thousand is for the uh, the boots. The, 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 yeah, it's, it's for the the the, the safety boots. And yeah, it's just safety shoes, safety, safety yeah. vests. Yeah, and hard the, the the twenty five thousand is the the startup for the new uniform. So again, you. Know, you're not going to see. Yeah. So you're talking about. You're probably not going to see the same twenty-five thousand for next year because at that point, this is just a start. You, you, exactly. You, know, you you yeah. you'd have two or three new employees come in. Those folks would get uniforms, but you know you wouldn't be new outfitting your so entire workforce. Twenty-five thousand for uniforms. So it sounds like we have to buy these uniforms and then we get them clean. So wouldn't it be the same rental fee week after week? It is the same. I have. I would say it's unrealized cost to us at this point. We, we're not exactly sure. You're not sure, but you're requesting $30,000. Yeah. Right. So, okay. so this is a new, folks out there, don't wear, don't wear uniforms now. Right. We're going to buy them all uniforms, make them wear uniforms, yeah. and make the office staff all dress alike. Yeah. This is a new initiative. Uh, it, it's a new old initiative. It's a, we, we, when I first it started back. working with the county, we all wore county uniforms. Right. I mean, that's how we dress. And it's gotten away from it as budget cuts came along. The same thing, you know, with employees, mm -hmm. employees. You trim where you can, and uniforms weren't the highest priority on the list. So now we're just trying to step back and get everybody looking like a uniform workforce. Yeah. How, was, does county, was, how does the county roads handle that? Type one. What, what basically what solid waste does? Roads we we go in conjunction. So, so uniforms. I know they do uniforms now. Well, they, they've got the, the retroflective shirts that they yeah. wear, and they've got the vest. So over at Rose, you'll have basically split. Basically, you, you've got two uniforms. You've got the blue-gray, and then if you're on the roads, you're going to have the retroflective with the ANZ green on it. So, that, yeah. so your mechanics and your guys that are in the yard, they'll have the blue-gray uniforms on, and the folks that are out on the roads will still have the retroflective but yellows. But have yellow shirts on at Rhodes is was it? Oh yeah, yeah. So that's that's, that's why that they shows always the had Anzi green with the retroreflective stripe, mm -hmm. and then there's different different levels that you have to wear if you're working at nighttime mm -hmm. or things like that. So. Seems like a lot of money. I had a question about the uh, heavy equipment that you have for capital. Yes. Um, you've got a wheel loader and a posi track. Yes. Uh, but it looks like you're uh, outright buying. Yes. And then you have leases for a dozer, the compactor, big, excavator, and grinder. What, bigger, what did you decide to? It comes down to a matter of cost. It's just okay. like the grinder or the compactor. The compactor is like an eight to nine hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment, mm -hmm. all one crap. We don't want to expend those mm -hmm. types of funds at one time in case something else were to happen that was detrimental that we would need the money. It's uh, the bigger items we want to lease. Okay. The smaller items we just want to buy. Okay. So you don't feel like it warrant a lease on a positive track or a uh, load? I, I, I would probably start looking at it probably, you know. 250 or? Well, I was going to say 200. 200. 200 yeah. Okay. Somewhere like that. Oh, I've got one. The banking service is $8,000. Has that changed or is that? That hasn't changed. That's for the bank fees for processing the checks. Okay. Which bank do you use? It's, we use PNC Bank for our cash deposits, which is right down the road, but the county uses Bank of America as a whole. So, so we, we use both, PNC so, and Bank of America. So do we, we pay for checking? We do. There are checking fees. That's okay. done through finance, so I don't have details about our checking fees. Uh -huh. they, they generally use that account to pay for solid waste fees. Well, I know there's some banks that offer free checking. Could I big back off that real quick, Jeff? Because um, I know there was talk before about being able to do online, um, you know, buy your 
you know, your permits and things like that online, you know, your, your tag and everything. Is that, and I, I just go to the office and do it myself, but, so I haven't checked out the website, but is that uh, available now? We cannot buy permits online as of now. Um, we are implementing credit cards, which will be coming online within the next couple weeks. Okay. That will allow our commercial customers to pay their invoices online with a credit card. Right. And the next project is to get the permits online. It's yeah. something we're working on so, and so trying get the, to figure out. Get the household permits online? Yes, that, yeah. is, that is a goal in the future. Yeah, because I know that was something that was talked about, I don't know, a year ago? I mean, you know, it seems like that's an issue. You know, maybe that would be, you know, for... I, I use a check there, so maybe, you know, doing it online might cut those fees, all the credit card fees at that point. So I don't know if, if it's a wash financially or not for the county. But. Well, with the credit cards, um, the customer will pay the convenience fee okay. to use the credit card. It's 2.4%, okay. 2.45%. Right. So if they pay $10 for their minimum um, tipping fee at the scale, it would cost $10 and a quarter. Twenty-five cents to use their credit card. Or the $60 or whatever, and that's the, 60, yeah, the new add-on, the two. Okay. Yeah. It'd yeah. be $1.47 for, to pay with their, for their permit on the credit card. Yeah. Well, that, I, I know I've heard from people, and they, they, that's something people would definitely like, I think, to see. Absolutely, so, yeah. and we would like for them to be able to do that. And I think I saw the $2,500 worth of postage in there. You guys have that many mailings? We do. We, we mail out bills every month. We have... Um, it's usually around 130 bills a month, and plus we're going to mail out reminders when it comes time for permit renewals and things like that. So it is a lot of folks. Do you have to mail out reminders? Well, we don't have to, but the uh, citizens really get upset if they don't get a reminder. Some people will call us and say, we didn't get a reminder even though we've sent them out. So it is something that they, they like to have. It would be nice if we could just go to email. It, it would be nice, but a lot of the... Um, Customers that we have don't want to use email. It's just, yeah. Rhodes has a similar uh, 25,000 for uniforms as well. Rhodes has a similar line eyes with the uniforms. Um, sales promotions, I don't know if I missed it earlier on. Sales promotions, 20,000. What, is, what does that entail? Or did I miss that? Sales bills? Sa um, under salaries, promotions. I say sales promotions, I just meant promotions. Under salaries, yeah. and that is something that's done through HR. Um, I think they if they have a certain amount that they keep in. To say if I have a laborer who goes and gets a CDL, then he would get a four percent increase for extra added duty. Same thing with a CDL driver who doesn't have hazmat. If he gets a hazmat, then he gets four percent for the extra added duty. Those types of things. It's also a bucket too where if you have a person that leaves that's been with the county for a while and then you hire a new person at a lower salary, that savings will reflect in that promotional line item. Okay, yeah. If that makes I sense. see yeah, I see promotions and I think promotions um, I was thinking the wrong type of promotions. I thought maybe you had a promotions person that you brought in. That's, that's how I had seen that. I didn't see any uh, description of it. Um, the um, estimated contribution to the fund balance, what is that, 628000 What is that for? The, that's money we made over and above and are putting into our, what is yeah. well, the closure and then there's the? Post closure, post closure costs are generally the two things. Cell closure? Yeah, well, yeah well, that's the, the, the cell closure one is 500 if, this year. Yeah, if the, if the state were to come in and close the landfill tomorrow, the county has to have that set aside to okay. close it. Um, okay. So those are, uh, so that's closure. Post-closure is 30 years worth of testing after the landfill is closed. So we're still uh, well monitoring different things that have to go on through those things. So we have to have that money set aside. Um, Anything else that would, would would be just us forwarding our money into you know future cell construction or whatever the case may be. Yeah, and that's where the six twenty eight comes in. That's basically what's being put into savings. Is there um, is there any uh, funds from the landfill or services from the landfill being used now to do anything else in the county? And I'll use this as an example. What I'm getting at is we used funds from the landfill in the past to do the collector road and equipment and things like that. Is there anything going on now that 
that's being done in the county. I know you just said you use a drone to help the roads right. out to find a beaver. Right. A beaver, but I was wondering if there's anything else that's uh, that we're using county uh, landfill funds or services for that we're well, not, it's I, not being charged to that department. Right. What I have to be careful for a drone is a small thing I can go out there. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll just use that as an example. Um, there have been things. I mean, uh, one thing we've been approached about is, is some hangers, some old dilapidated hangers out at the airport that they went toward out. Uh -huh. um, it's always, is, you know, we have the machinery uh -huh. that's capable of doing the work, mm -hmm. but the payment has to come. We have to charge for the service. We mm -hmm. can't just go in and do things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we're looking at hangers at the, at the airport. Mm -hmm. But so um, you would charge the airport to do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We we could we, it, it could actually be done a couple different ways. We could charge the airport, or we could have the funds that come from the scrapping of the metal as a recycling mm -hmm. right. revenue. Right. Which is which isn't money. nothing right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. I guess in asking my question about the promotions is that there was zero monies allotted for promotions in the prior year, but this year there's twenty thousand allotted for promotions. That's why I thought it might be a salary position, because there was nothing budgeted for last year. Well, Human Resources handles that portion of our budget, so um, I can't explain why it would be zero for last year. It's most likely they took that, whatever the savings was, and applied it to the reorganization that was done with the um, uh, couple of few positions true. last year. It's probably what that was used for and why there was zero in promotional last year. So between last year and this year, the um, employee turnover where there's been savings, it goes into that line item, uh, if that makes sense. You know, we're, we have a certain amount of, for salaries, and if you hire somebody that's making less than the person that left, there's that savings until the next budget year. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Creative finance. Well, it's, it, it's a placeholder because if, like, next year we're asking it's $1.7 million for salary, so that's what we have for that entire year. So if you're not paying $1.7 in salaries, the other piece is, is in that line called promotional. It's not really an accounting. It's just a line so that you still have the one. That has to be retained, right, because you're an enterprise account. Am I correct? That has to be retained in your, in your account. You can't go back to the county. Is that correct? It stays in the solid waste. Yeah, right. the solid waste fund. Okay. So at the end of the year, it just rolls over back into the enterprise fund. Okay. The only thing I took away from it is that the recycling, it's, it seems like the recycling just isn't getting off the ground to me. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like the revenues are increasing. I mean, you're, you're flat with your revenues. It seems like your revenues may go down. As far as recycling? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. But it, you're budgeted to stay the same. Yes. But I'm, my concern is, you, and, and granted, we're only talking about, well, we're talking about 35000 for recycling, and I guess that you have to attribute the uh, the 12000 towards recycling as well, even the, to the containers. Yeah. That yeah, market so globally is, is depressed. Yeah. So you got about, 50, you got about 40 some thousand dollars that you're increasing your recycling budget by, and um, more than doubling it, and yet at the same time, the revenue just isn't. Yeah, I mean, so, so recycling has got, you know, there, there's two sides to it. There's the, well, hey, let's do it to make money, which obviously isn't happening. But then there's a, a we have to do it because the yeah. MDE says, mandated. yeah, it's zero waste. So if you can't take it out or you can't dump it into the landfill, you got to take it out of the waste stream. So that's where it's like, okay, well, there's, there's not much else you can do. I mean, eventually MDE's got to release that cat, and there's two things people got to do. They got to flush their toilets, and they got to throw out their garbage. That's not change. I mean, yeah. you know. So, but MDE seems to like to, to keep squeezing. So we, we've got to find other ways. And, you know, like, like Mark said, you know, there's there's the push for the the composting, but realistically, it, it doesn't really work and doesn't stink. And you know, it's th that material. Degrade so fast, and you throw a banana peel out. It, you know, two weeks later, it's gone. You throw a plastic bottle out. Mm. Two years later, it's still sitting there. Five hundred years. Yeah. yeah. So you know, there's it's it's nice for me to say composting, but well, a few years ago when this zero waste thing came along, I was up in Annapolis and we were looking at that bill at Mako, and you know, I was reading it and I was saying, how how can landfills reach this? And then when I finished reading the rest of the bill, 
basically what it says. If you didn't reach it, you had to pay per ton yes. for what into your landfill to the state. So it was just it was just a generator for the state. That's how, that's that's what it zero waste is. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yeah. Good. Good. Any other questions? I have one quick thing. Yes. Um, okay, so for contingency, you guys have fifty thousand, and it appears you had fifty thousand last year. Why do you guys use the contingency a like separate line item as opposed to the county's contingency? Well, okay. I mean, is the county contingency isn't that general fund? Yeah. I believe so. Yes. And w with us being enterprise, which is why we would have to okay. hold our own. Anything else? Anything else? No. So what happened to last year's fifty thousand? I'm it assuming. Wasn't used. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it, it wasn't used last year. So you put it back in. It just rolls back into the enterprise fund. And the enterprise enterprise fund. Keeps Solid building. waste. Yes, that's where the five million is coming from to build the cell. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sort of makes sense. Good job. Good job. Keep that growing. Good job. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, Drones are good. Drones, are, they're helpful. They're um, it, 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 it's exciting when you, you know because it's not just that. It's like a so think about if you have a, a county building that's got a leaky yeah, roof and you need to find out where it is. All right, that concludes the. Uh, Budget session for uh, May 8, 2017. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Second. Mr. President. Yes. Can we talk about um, other departments that we would sure. like to have come in? Yes, we may. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was a good job. First budget. Good job. I don't think I'm going to shock them. You might get a no, but hopefully we'll get a yes. Oh, when you guys do this again, can you put the numbers beside it? Everywhere else the Department of Insurance. So it would be easier yeah. to look up instead of asking everybody? Yes. What time has everybody been done? Been done. Been done. Yeah. Um, it's going to start at 9.30, I think. You're talking about the Wednesday session? Okay. Yeah. I got to go.